Greetings, Brother Ravana Noon. I'm here in my sacred space, our sacred space, our ritual room. I'm going to show you my altar and my wife's altar, which is in back of me, my altar, which is to the right. I'm going to show you my perspective of a left-hand path altar. Now, as we know, individuals are uh, very program and traditionalistic. What I mean by that is most of the time when people practice magic or sorcery, they're coming from some tradition or some uh, system that has a set rules and regulations on how to do things. Well, on the left-hand path, we set up our own rules and regulations. We set up our altars how we see fit. Okay, we don't come from any one tradition. The only thing that we suggest or that I suggest is that when you have something on your altar, it has a similar type of energy that's interconnected. Okay, and I'll explain what that is or explain what that means shortly. So, over here, to my right, we have the skulls. The skull little skull and a bigger skull here. This is more necromantic. And my altar deals a lot with vampiric and necromantic energy. Okay? So I have a skull here and I have set or satuf in the back representing that isolated consciousness, that God mind to be the individual and master over self. Also connected to the vampiric current. Okay? When you find out some of the history connected to Set, Set was supposedly able to connect with the 72 Sabao or his 72 followers and perform some dark magic rituals to become immortal and vampiric. That's another story for another time that you can investigate. Okay? Right next to Set, right here in the back, I have my vampire. Again, I said this is a vampiric necromantic altar and a vampire current or is very similar to the death current also related to the sex current so this is right here next to set and then I have my situary candles which represents the trifold life well birth life and death okay birth life and death the dark candle represents birth coming from the dark womb of the female Life is the red candle, our desires, our passions, our lust, our goals, our plans. And once again, death going back into that darkness. In the back, I have the Grim Reaper of the world. Mine, for some reason, is losing its lighting. Then I have the Vampiric Skull with the top hat of Baum Samdi. Again, connected with the symbol of Vampire and death all through this altar. <clears throat> in the front I have the, the coffin, which I use for my necromantic rituals. I have a bunch of crystals that are mostly crystals for darker energy work. I have, of course, cigars working with the gay day. Okay? I have Kali over here. If you can't see it, I have Kali over here. Kali representing death and destruction, which leads to transformation. And in front of that I have the astral vampire candle for astral projection or astral travel which is on my website serpentcrystals.com uh, many some of this stuff you can find actually on my website uh, if you feel so to want to purchase any of these things next to Kali I have Anku Anku who is considered the spirit guide or the guide of the dead Okay, in the comedic pantheon or comedic tradition. In front of that I have the comedic skull. This comedic skull is connected with Anku, communication with the dead or, com or spirit guy with the dead. And then I have my vampire tombstone. I have my two chalices, one for Baphomet, Androgyny, mastery, self-mastery, 
total embodiment. And I have my skull or my necromantic chalice for when I work that angle, okay? Not only that, over here I have my ritual oils that I utilize for my rituals. So when you see the rituals um, or hear about rituals that I've done, these are the oils I use, which most of these you can also find on my website. For example, I have the money one here. I have the power oil, which is very, very strong to work when you're working with dark current. I have the Shiva Lingam when you're working some tantric sex magic. Kali oil for when you're working destructive, chaotic, or sex magic. Etc. Etc. I have good old air incense for when I work gin magic or just any ritual in general. One of some of the most powerful incense you can find by Nabil.com. All right. Of course, I have pictures here of my deceased relatives. Then I have on my wall, I have Baun Samdi, my mom I have Kali, I have Baun Samdi again, my mom I have Lilith. Baphomet, the gay day again, Sat Satuk, the gay day again, and some of the uh, energy from South America as well. I have Lilith, I have Shiva, I have Papa Legba, I have the Bebe, Papa Legba, I have some Sith. I have the Sith to Jill, I have uh, Darth Barris there, and more Bebe's here with a Voodoo Queen here. So that's one aspect of what I work on this altar. The purpose of this is to show you the altars because soon I'll be presenting actual rituals that um, I will be performing for you so you can get an idea of left hand path rituals so some of y'all who can't make it to the rituals in South Florida will be able to get an idea of some of the things you can do yourself. Let me show you my wife's altar now. my wife's altar. In the corner here, we have more of the Vudan aspect of uh, dealing with the spirits of the deceased and the dead. We have Baun Samdi, we have Marie Laveau, we have Maman Rajit and Baun Samdi together. We have Francisco and Maria, uh, Alegua, but we have more of that African aspect there. Then over here, we come more to the necromantic aspect. We have a Grim Reaper, which is connected to Santa Muerte, but originally this symbol was the Grim Reaper. Another Grim Reaper of the world, that's how mine used to light up. For some reason, don't light up like that anymore. Scrying, black scrying mirror. We have a tombstone with a crow raven on there. We have a coffin. We have Papa Legba. We have some cigars here. On this side, we have vampire energy. We have Kali and we have Sekhmet. This is more of the vampiric aspect on her side of the altar with a skull here. And Ampu there, a little statue of Ampu here. So that just so you can get an idea of what we're working with in this household, what we're working with on the left hand path. I'm going to now show you close ups so you can get an idea how all this looks close up and go from there. Okay, there you go. You see Baon Samdi, Marie Laveau. You see Amman Brigitte, Marie Laveau in the middle. You see Francisco and Maria, who represent the ancestors. Then you come to the middle. You see the Grim Reaper of the world. Nice lights coming from the ball. You see another Grim Reaper, which some connect to Santa Muerte. You see another skull there. You see Papa Legba. And then, you see the vampiric side here. You see the Shalas, you see the vampire, you see Sekhmet, Kali, 
and that's that. Now over here, you will come to see mine. And you will see where we go from starting at set. You will see the vampire in the back. You see the chalice. You see the vampiric skull with bottomless empty top hat. You see Kali. You see Ampoo way in the back. Cauldron, the ritual oils. You could also see the coffin in the front. And then when you look at the wall, you can see the sigils and things of that nature. So this is just an idea. Just a simple idea of some aspects of how you can set up a left hand path altar or whatever floats with your boat whatever you like these are just some ideas some things like that I didn't show you this over here which is my Moorish Arab working uh, statue I mean photo or painting when I work gin magic things of that nature so this is some aspect that you can understand next few days I'm gonna make a video actually performing a ritual so you can see how a ritual is like and what it's connected to and I mean light up one of these right here beautiful air incense before the charcoal actually goes out because I almost forgot that it was lit purifying the space for a ritual I'll perform later. Normally, I'll give you a quick quickie at the beginning. If you choose to open a circle, normally in the left-hand path, we do it counterclockwise. We do not do it clockwise. We do it counterclockwise. Okay? My altars face the north. Your altar can face any direction you choose. I choose to face the north, which is more power, more darkness, tapping into the subconscious mind. I also, when I work my necromancy, communicating with the spirits of the dead, I have my consecrated staff right here. Okay? Sometimes you can bang three times to open or knock on a door to the gateway for the spirits. So that's just an example. Alright? So with that, I'll leave y'all and I'll see y'all tomorrow at uh, 7 p.m. when we deal with the spiritual gatekeepers. All right? Peace.